I'm sitting here with Jürgen Moltmann, one of the foremost theologians in the world today. We're in Tübingen, where he used to teach for many years. We have just uh, finished a small consultation on joy, and that's the occasion why we are talking together. Yes. Jürgen, if I may, uh, you have written a book about joy some 40 years ago. Yes. What have you learned in the meantime about joy? Well, at, uh, 40 years ago, it was a time of the protest movement against the Vietnam War and uh, the student unrest everywhere in the world. And uh, at that time, I was thinking about uh, how can I sing the Lord's song in an alien land. Mm -hmm. And uh, 40 years after, I want to understand how to sing the Lord's song in the broad place of his presence. So it's from the dialectic uh, to the affirmation. Uh, and now hope is for me anticipated joy, as anxiety is anticipated terror. And today, at least in Germany, we live more by anxiety and terror than uh, by hope and joy. And so in anxiety and terror, how does one <coughs> find way to joy? Well, whenever I feel the presence of God, uh, then I, my heart is lifted up and uh, I see more positive into the future of the coming of God. And uh, thus hope is uh, awakened in me. Who is God for you? Jesus Christ is a f human face of God. And uh, without Jesus Christ, I would not believe in God. Looking at the catastrophes of nature and the human catastrophes of history, I would not uh, come of the, uh, on the idea that a God exists and this God is love. This was unthinkable for me. As a but young... with Jesus Christ and his message and his suffering on the cross and his resurrection from the cross, uh, my feeling that God is present in the midst of suffering is uh, a firm trust of my heart. So you're not speaking right now <coughs> simply as a theologian. You're speaking from personal experience of yeah. discovering or being discovered by God. Yeah. When you were, can you say more about this experience? Well, when, which, was, which was experience of anxiety, uh, aftermath of terror, uh, a place where joy normally would not uh, find its uh, entrance? Well, when, when I was 16, I was drafted to the German army in 1943 and uh, experienced the destruction of my hometown, Hamburg. Uh, at the mid in the midst of Hamburg, there was an anti-aircraft battery and we uh, schoolboys <laughs> had to surf in this battery. And uh, well, the operation called by the British was the Operation Gomorra, the destruction of the sinful city of Hamburg. Mm -hmm. And I was in the midst of it. And at that time, I cried out to God for the first time. Uh, 
And later I uh, was in prison, uh, in a prison camp in Scotland, and uh, there I read with consciousness for the first <coughs> time the Gospel of Mark. And when I came to the uh, cry with uh, which Jesus died, my God, why, why has thou so forsaken me? I felt that there is a divine brother who feels the same as my feeling was at that time. And uh, this uh, saved me from self-destruction mm -hmm. and uh, desperation. And so uh, I came up with hope on a place where there was no expectation to come home soon. Uh, we, we were, uh, the imprisonment lasted for three years. Yeah. You have later written a book that uh, I've heard you say you consider to be the most important book that you have written, namely The Crucified God. And at the heart of that yeah. book, in a sense, uh, is this cry of mm -hmm. dereliction. Yeah. Um, how is that book <coughs> related to, to the book on hope? Uh, how is the cry of yeah. dereliction of pain related to the joy of jubilation uh, of resurrection? Well, uh, I started with hope and resurrection of Christ. Uh, with is, is a ground of hopeful expectation of the coming of Christ and the coming of the kingdom of God. And uh, when I uh, experienced in the US that they took this as a reinforcement of the normally American uh, pursuit of happiness and the American optimism. I said uh, when I would return, I would only speak of the other side of Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I came <coughs> from the side of the resurrection to the side of the crucifixion. And uh, uh, there are two sides of the presence of Christ. You wrote in the paper that uh, was read by the participants of the consultation on joy that Christian faith is a unique religion of joy. And you tied that to the key um, moments in the Christ story, death, uh, resurrection, and then also coming of the, of the Spirit. Can you say more about this uniqueness? Uh, in, in what ways yeah. and why is Christian faith uniquely religion of joy? Well, as a center of Judaism is a Torah. Mm -hmm. As a center of Christianity is the Evangelion, the gospel. Mm -hmm. And this is good news. And uh, this is the news that uh, God has raised the crucified Christ uh, to be the Lord of the world. And uh, therefore, Christianity is unique in this sense, that it is a religion of joy. E uh, Easter carols and, uh, no, uh, Christmas carols and Easter laughter mm -hmm. and uh, with the awakening of Pentecost mm -hmm. feelings. Uh, this is, uh, unique in Christianity. Is, uh, uh, I don't mean that uh, Christianity is absolute, mm -hmm. uh, but it is unique in this way. Uh, compares, compare this with Judaism and the Islam and Buddhism. They are all unique in their uh, center, mm -hmm. but uh, the center of the resurrection is uh, unique in Christianity. You've earlier contrasted um, 
pursuit of happiness, a uh, certain form of optimism. Also, in your uh, paper, you've contrasted, uh, you spoke about uh, Spaßgesellschaft, fun uh, society, yeah. and contrasted <coughs> uh, all these, um, pursuit of happiness, optimism, uh, fun, to, to joy. How are they different? Well, uh, fun is a superficial feeling uh, which must be repeated again and again to, uh, to last, uh, while joy is uh, a deeper feeling of the, the whole existence. Uh, you can have fun uh, at the side. Uh, but you can experience joy only with your whole heart, your whole soul, and all your energies. Mm. Uh, and the, therefore, uh, Schiller thought uh, that uh, joy is uh, divine. It comes uh, from outside into our life in a surprise, in a turning, from sadness to goodness, from sickness to health, and from loneliness to communion. And this turning point awakens uh, awakened, uh, joy. So, so joy isn't then a kind of simply a, a feeling. Joy is a response to uh, certain states of affairs that have been changed, mm -hmm. created, to which there is a particular way of responding. Is that how would, would that yeah, be a way uh, to express it? Something well, that changed. You, you cannot make yourself joyful. Uh, this, is, this would be self-satisfaction. Mm -hmm. uh, but you are always outside of yourself watching yourself, uh, I, uh, am I being happy or not? Uh, mm. And this uh, would never lead to joy. Uh, something unexpected must happen. Mm. So falling in love, for example, to take it from natural life or uh, S sudden success mm. uh, or in political life uh, the unification of Germany mm. or the coming of Nelson Mandela out of 30 years of prison mm. in uh, Robben Island and he came and everybody expected a civil war mm. and nothing happened. Nelson Mandela came. This is a, a reason for su surprise and joy. Mm. So in a sense, it's not a natural course of events that we expect to, to, to happen. It comes to us almost as a gift, as a gratuity yeah. from, from yeah. outside. Yeah. Do, do you think there are, um, I can think of, uh, of uh, great events that you were describing, mm. uh, or, and maybe I can give an example with a contrasting, uh, contrasting uh, one as a, also, something much more quiet that may be a source of joy. Let's say a child is born. That may be like the event of Exodus. That may be like the event of something completely new comes. But then, and there's joy, and there's rejoicing yeah. in it. But the child is growing, and there's kind of a quieter joy that uh, attends to a uh, relationship to something that's there, but that it's also always experienced as gift. Or one falls in love, but then love matures, and, uh, and every morning it's a kind of new. So there may be exhilarating joy, and there may, uh, right. may be kind of quieter joy. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. Uh, I think the intention of love is the happiness of the beloved. Mm. So love's intention is not to uh, own the beloved, 
but to have the beloved happy. Uh, and therefore, uh, some love sometimes uh, supports the beloved and sometimes taking oneself back to let the beloved in freedom. Mm -hmm. So both actions are actions of love. Uh, uh, so we are not loved because we are so beautiful and good, but we are loved, uh, we are beautiful and good because we are loved. And, and th this is true for interpersonal yeah. relationships and also true with the relationship of God who is love, as we say in the, with the New Testament. Yeah. Yeah. And so he wants to see his beloved children on earth happy and joyful. And in a sense, the, the, the contrast that you made, we are not loved because we are beautiful, we are beautiful yeah. because we are loved, it kind of breaks a cause and effect relationship. If I'm beautiful and I'm loved, uh, I'm beautiful, the, the, my beauty kind of elicits the love and it's expected. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But if I'm not, I, the love comes to me always a, a, as a gift, as a surprise and lifts me up precisely yeah, in those yeah, terms. Yeah. And then is a cause of joy. So is, is there, a, do you see connection between joy and gratitude? For yes, something that comes? yes, of course. Uh, every child knows this at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so stance of uh, perceiving oneself as having been blessed and therefore grateful. Yeah. Is, uh, so in other words, it uh, may not be enough to have a, a child at, at, at Christmas. It, it, it's not enough for a child to get the present, right? No. They have to uh, receive that present as a gift and be grateful for it for joy to occur. Yeah. They, may, they may be dissatisfied because they didn't get quite the present they wanted uh, and then joy yeah, is gone, yeah, right? Yeah. But if, when it works well, then the present gratitude and joy form yeah. a, a, kind of a kind of a nexus. But every child and every uh, person knows that uh, anticipated joy is the best joy. But if you there, always there anticipate a, only. <laughs> there is uh, a certain melancholy of the second day of Christmas. Yeah. If you get what you anticipated, what then? What's there? But if you never yeah. get what you anticipate, <laughs> if you only anticipate, right? So it's a kind of dialectic between, yeah, yeah, between the yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at uh, one point you have also connected the, the kind of the character of the God as Christian faith embraces or believes in a God who is love, but God who is a kind of passionate God, God yeah. who is engaged with the world mm -hmm. with the question of, with, with the issue of joy, so that the passion of God becomes the foundation of, of joy. Yes, and I feel at one with uh, Abraham Heschel from Judaism, who spoke of the pathos of mm -hmm. God, uh, a passionate God uh, is on every page of the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, as we say. But we, in the Christian tradition, have still to wrestle with the absolute God of the Greek metaphysics, who is apathetic mm. by nature. He does, uh, God doesn't feel joy, God doesn't feel pain. He is above pain and joy. So the apathetic God makes uh, a, a man apathetic too. Mm -hmm. This is 
the sovereignty of the soul, uh, which yeah. is above feelings of joy and pain and uh, the pathos of God or the passion of God makes uh, the believers compassionate. Mm. They participate in the suffering of others and uh, participate in the joy of others. Sometimes it seems to me that compassion with the suffering of others is uh, easier than the uh, compassion with the joy of others. Mm -hmm. We feel so good if we can have mercy with yeah. somebody else. And we feel uh, some uh, envy yeah. if uh, somebody else uh, feel joy and success, at, at, at least in the academic world. <laughs> this yeah, the, is the case. The rest of the world is spared for, for, from that <laughs> temptation, I'm, I'm sure. Um, the, the joy of God, it's, uh, it's almost like a revolutionary idea, right? That the God, um, the creator of all that is, would rejoice. Right, at least against the backdrop of some of the Greek uh, philosophical thinking and uh, much of the Christian tradition too. Yeah, how, uh, can, uh, how can we speak of the love of God if we don't dare to speak of the joy of God? Because God loves somebody's joy and participates in the joy of his creation. and. Uh, in the New Testament, we have Luke chapter 15, where the, there's more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 uh, just people, uh, which is not uh, true uh, according to the parables given in this chapter, because the lost coin could not repent, mm -hmm. and the lost sheep could uh, only make a noise, but not repent. Only the prodigal <coughs> son repented, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, his father <coughs> was not uh, interested in his confession of sin. He loves him uh, as soon as he saw him. So it's God's finder joy. Uh, in these parables. You have, uh, I think yesterday, if I listen to you rightly, you have connected joy of God with love of God, but you've connected, or love of God with joy, but you've also connected love of God with wrath of God. So that yeah. makes us uh, joy and wrath and love uh, would go together. Did I hear well, uh, I interpret the wrath of God as God's wounded love. Mm. Uh, uh, if you feel the wrath of another person, you feel also the interest of another person in you. Mm. Uh, only if that person turns away and turns the back to you, then you feel indifference. Yeah. And this is the most uh, terrible thing we can experience of God, that he has turned his countenance away from us. Uh, the Jews call this Hester Panim, yeah. the dark face of God. Uh, that is the um, the contrary or the opposition to the shining continents of God from where the blessing comes, yeah. according to the Aaronite blessing formula. But let, God, let shine your continents over us and give us peace. But joy is more lasting and stronger 
than Ras? Um, yeah. We have uh, certain testimonies for this, even in the Old Testament. My wrath is only for a moment, and my grace is everlasting. Mm -hmm. So joy, in is, the end, wins. Yeah, I'm convinced of that. Thank you, Jürgen. <laughs>